Chicken factory farms are notoriously inaccessible to anyone outside of the industry, despite chicken being America's most popular meat. So this is the first time that I have been invited by a contract farmer that is working for one of the biggest integrators in the country. I'm Craig Watts. I'm a contract poultry producer with Purdue Farms. Why were you open to letting me visit? I'm open to anything because just this stuff is not as advertised. There's a lot of flaws in the system. The, the consumer's being hoodwinked. The farmer's being jerked around. Chicken from this Purdue farm is USDA process verified. The USDA calls this humanely raised. And consumers are paying for it. Today, the consumer is much more interested in knowing how the chickens are raised, what they've been eating, before it gets to their table. And it's about trust and trusting the company. Doing the right thing is things like treating your chickens humanely. First three or four days, you're going to have some inflated mortality. It's just how bad is it going to get? That's the, that's the $64,000 question. How bad is it going to get? For each new flock, death is highest in the first and last week of the bird's life. I can't speak for a chicken. All I can say is what I observe, and uh, no, they're not happy. And they're definitely not healthy. When you get to that point right there, yeah, you're suffering. And it's just the acceptable losses. If they're not, you know, kind of up and down and drinking and eating, uh, they're not loving life, that's for sure. Over the course of six weeks, in a house of 30,000 chickens, it's considered normal for more than 1,000 birds to die in every flock due to illness, genetic problems, or other issues, including injuries. Craig has no control over the health or genetics of the chicks that are delivered to him by Purdue. Bound by contract, Craig is not even allowed to give them sunshine or fresh air. Just 37 days later, they are a sea of panting birds. Panting indicates birds are overheated. These birds find it too painful to bear the weight of their unnaturally large breasts on their legs and spend the majority of their time squatting. Their heart and lungs are also physiologically taxed overburdened by servicing their disproportionately large chests. There is nothing natural or humane about this scene. As a result of growing so big so quickly, these baby birds, only weeks old, spend much of their time sitting on the litter. Many suffer from lameness, limping, and other leg problems. The litter contains the feces of tens of thousands of birds, which they sit on nearly continuously toward the end of their lives. Litter is not changed between flocks and sometimes not for years. Constant contact to the litter makes the underneath of the birds raw with little to no feathers. If you get that natural sunlight, the birds are more active. They don't want that. They want him sitting down, getting up, taking a drink, a bite to eat, and sitting back down. He gets fat then. They do not allow you to have this open anymore. No. That's in your contract. You have to keep them enclosed. Craig and I realized we want the same thing. We want to reform the industry, and we're going to have to stand shoulder to shoulder to do that. Well, I absolutely would do away with solid walls. I would give them back sunlight. Letting sunshine and fresh air in is, number one, the birds love it. And number two, it's better for me. I think it's almost going to have to be a start over. I think we're past the rewind button here. Right, but this is going too far.